If one leads a perfectly moral and dispassionate life, doesn't fall in the trap of sense enjoyments, what amount of extra spirituality does he have to do to reach moksha? So meaning, if I already live a good life, I already am abiding by spiritual principles, how much more do I have to do to attain moksha or freedom? First of all, moksha is not in exchange for it's not a give and take bargain, like, oh God, I've already done A, B, and C. Could you skip over D, E, and F, and then I'll come back around and maybe I'll do some X, Y, and Z. But if you could give me a break for the stuff in the middle, that would be great. It's not like that. It's not a bargain. It's not about, well, I've already done this. What's the bare minimum else that I need to tick off my list? Moksha doesn't actually require anything. Moksha doesn't say thou shalt not enjoy the senses that the body has. Moksha does not say thou must act like this or be like that. Moksha simply says, Thou shalt not be trapped. Moksha means freedom. We think of it as freedom from the body, but it's not that because the body is not the problem. The problem is the mind. It's the mind that says, not just, oh, wow, I really enjoy the sight of that sunset the sound of the birds singing, the sound of the wind in the trees, or I really enjoy the taste of that hot cup of tea or cool water. That's not a bondage. It's just saying, oh God, you've given me this ability to witness the sunset, to hear the music. I'm enjoying it. The bondage in the mind is, oh, that's not fair. Why this one? Why that one? How dare she? How dare he? Why not me? Or why always me? These are the bondages of the mind that keep us from freedom. The bondage of the mind that says, I'm better than this one. I'm smarter than that one more worthy than this one. I know more. I'm the best. The mind plays the games. The mind is the one that's always scheming and judging and criticizing and creating all kinds of nonsense for us against others and against the self. It's the mind that's always telling us, ah, you're not good enough. You're stupid, you're worthless. All the games are games of the mind. And that's the bondage, is that ignorance that says not, I have these senses, but that I am these senses. Understand that very clearly. The bondage is not enjoying what the eyes behold in a sunset or a tree or a baby's face or enjoying what the ears hear in singing of the birds or beautiful classical music or beautiful kirtan or whatever it may be. The bondage is in thinking I am those senses. Thinking that I am the body. Thinking that I am the thoughts, the emotions, the patterns, the history, the stories. That 
that's the bondage. And so moksha is the freedom from that bondage. Moksha is the awareness that, yes, I have senses, but I'm not them. I have a body, I'm not it. The body has a history, I'm not it. There's patterns of chemical and electrical behavior in my brain that we call emotions. I'm not it. Real freedom. can be instantaneous in a moment. The moment that I stop being a slave to the games of my mind, the moment that I stop being a slave to the calls of the senses, I need this, I want that, mm, that was good, I need more. Where is that? Where's my pizza? Where's my ice cream? Where's my this? Where's my that? Then I'm a slave. So moksha is freedom from the games of the mind. There's that beautiful teaching that says, Man eva manushya nam karanam bandha mokshayo. The mind is the key. The key to our bondage or our freedom. It's up to us. So if you want moksha, all of the practices you're doing, fantastic. Keep doing them. But don't think of them as items on a checklist to moksha. Moksha can be there with you right here, right now. The minute that you stop thinking, you're not free. Because that's also the game of the mind. Oh, I have these problems. Oh, I have these challenges. Oh, my mom was like that. Oh, my father was like that. Oh, my husband or my wife or my colleagues or my children or my in-laws. Oh, my childhood was like this. That's why. That's why I'm not free. That's why I'm not living in moksha. That's why I'm not living in light. That's just a story. That's just ignorance. That's bondage. That thought is bondage. Not the mom or the dad or the childhood or the boss or the in-laws. But the thinking that I am that history or that identity or that problem. That's what keeps me stuck. So it's very simple, not easy, not easy at all, which is why for thousands of years we've had scriptures and teachings and saints and gurus and sages. But it is simple. It just requires us to realize that our own way of thinking is what is keeping me from being free. And that if I really realize I'm not the thoughts, I'm not the thinker of the thoughts, I am that awareness. I am that consciousness that simply knows, ah, thinking is happening. That's the beginning of the beginning to start being able to touch that freedom. But moksha's there. Regardless of how much you've ticked off your list. But go ahead, keep ticking them off because these are great spiritual practices. Just don't think that they're what's standing in the way between you and moksha. They're all things that purify our mind. That's what sadhana does purifies our mind, makes us know, I'm not my hunger, I'm not my senses, I'm not my history, I'm not my drama, purifies us. And as the mind gets purer and purer and purer, it's less and less a slave to the stories, 
and then freedom is possible. Right now.